what is up my embers so for today's video i am going to be talking about hooters my experience literally everything that you need to know about hooters if you're wanting to work there if you just want to be nosy and you want to know what it was like then i'm going to explain literally every single dynamic of hooters for you guys I worked at two different locations, so I have two completely different like Hooters experiences really. Before I get into this video, make sure you guys subscribe and turn on your post notifications so that you guys can get notified every single time that I post. I literally have like a whole bunch of pages of notes for this video because it's a long one. So basically this video is going to be broken up into sections. I'm going to be talking about how to get hired, the training that comes along after that, the uniform, serving in general, the money aspect as well as the women and men aspect of Hooters and at the very end I'm going to talk about what I learned in my experience. So for the first section of the video I'm going to be talking about how to get hired and basically how I got hired at Hooters was I was in between jobs at Walmart and I literally just applied online and I called and they told me to call back in like the next 30 minutes they didn't answer so I just called back the next day and then the general manager ended up picking up the phone and asking what my name was and then he reviewed my application on the phone actually and that's when he told me to come in for an interview but before all of that i obviously had to fill it out and i had to put like a picture and everything like that so i'm just going to show you guys like the picture that i put on my application i probably look way different than the picture that i use but basically you just want to choose a picture that you know kind of shows your body a little bit your face your frame you know what you look like it doesn't have to be too scandalous it doesn't have to be too businessy they just want to see what you look like what they're working with basically so around the time when i started at hooters was like september it was like september 29th of 2020 after i was called in for an interview i obviously got dressed up and basically for the interview like i had watched a million of these types of Hooters videos and every video just said to you know just dress business casual don't overdo it because like once you walk in the store you're being judged by a whole bunch of girls so you don't want to be like that girl to like go over the top or like try to like you know like do too much because it's also just Hooters and it's just like any other restaurant it just kind of has like a beauty standard to it so literally all I wore to my interview was a I had on a waist trainer first of all and then I had on a maroon like bodysuit long sleeve that like cut off right here kind of like a crew neck and it was really tight and then I also wore jeans and some white air forces so it was very casual my hair and makeup was done exactly the way it would be if I was were to be working there so just make sure that if you're gonna go for an interview make sure your hair is done your makeup is done and you just look like the best version of yourself basically so I was literally so nervous before I even went in for my interview and like once I got hired I was so like oh my gosh like am I really a Hooters girl? Because I don't know why, but like I literally had aspired to be a Hooters girl for like so long just because I felt like Hooters girls were literally like the baddest and the baddest, you know? And I just feel like at most jobs, like you don't have to have your makeup done and you don't have to be cute and you can't wear nails and certain shit like that. So for me to get hired as a Hooters girl, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is my breakthrough. Like what the heck? I was so excited. So the day that I was going for my interview, I had already had a friend that had worked at the same store that I had previously. And she basically just told me like, go ahead and bring an extra $5 just in case they want you to put on pantyhose or whatever, because you're going to have to pay for the pantyhose to try on. Like most of the time at Hooters, they'll do like your first interview and then they'll have a second interview where you try on the uniform and then you'll have orientation. But for mine, it was just all in one. Like I go for the interview. He tells me that he's ready for me to be a Hooters girl. He wants to see what I look like in the uniform then I go and I see what I look like or whatever so I had already had five dollars whenever I was at the interview I went I put on the pantyhose I literally ripped the pantyhose so bad like literally so bad there was holes everywhere I was so embarrassed but I had never really put pantyhose on before so I didn't know how to put them on and then he took a picture of me he told me to stand on the door he had to take my necklace off and he took a picture of me and basically they take a picture of you when you first get hired to if it's a corporate store they take a picture of you send it to corporate so that they can basically have the picture of what you look like when you first started that's what they're gonna use when you know if they see like not really if they see your weight fluctuate but if they see like a drastic change in like your appearance and stuff they're obviously gonna pull the picture up and be like 
you know like well, what the fuck is going on here so that's really what the picture is for and then it's always so fun to like go back and look at your first picture anyways i don't know it's kind of like a first day of school picture my interview was super easy literally before i went in there my friend had told me to just you know be bubbly act like i know stuff about sports and stuff like that and i was literally just asked like what is my customer service experience have i ever been in a hooters do i know anything about sports basically just trying to like hold a conversation just to see like like how I interact with people and stuff and he asked me like because at the time I had just had print he asked me was I wearing a waist trainer and then he asked me just like where I had worked before and everything I don't know it was just a super easy interview but literally when I tell you guys like as long as you look good and you have a cute personality like they're gonna take you in or even if you just have a really good personality like I'm telling you guys you would be surprised at the girls that you see in Hooters like it's not always just the Barbie doll girl or stuff like that like there's literally so many different versions of what a Hooter girl can look like. You literally just have to be a good person, great personality, that's everything. Another reason why you shouldn't get super dressed up during your interview is because if like, if you're wearing heels and you have to try on the uniform, I wore white shoes because I knew they wore white shoes with the uniform, but like if you're wearing heels, you're gonna have to wear the uniform with heels and it's just embarrassing for everyone. So yeah. Once I was hired and everything, then I had to start my training and basically the first two days of training were like in the morning and I just had to follow the server around and basically I would just be listening watching you know just going through basic training of any job seeing how the POS works all that type of stuff this was my first serving job I had never served prior to Hooters so I was like super fucking nervous for that part but before Hooters I was working at Walmart as a supervisor and before Walmart I was a manager is Zaxby, so I kind of had a little bit of a gist with like food service and stuff but serving is definitely something that takes time to like be really good at i feel like i catch on to things pretty quickly especially like in the work field and stuff i have a pretty good work ethic so i literally always just try my hardest like no matter what it is and i literally was so like just blown away by like the money of serving i'll get into all that later but i was seriously just like what the heck is going on right now so the last two days wait did i so the last two days of training i basically had to work on the floor by myself with like supervision of the other trainer and it was a little nerve-wracking i was just ready to be on my own because you know you do different things differently than other people do them basically by my last day of training i was still a nervous fucking wreck like i didn't even want to go on the floor my first day when i had to but I did anyway and also whenever you get hired you have to do this like long ass serve safe certification thing and it literally took me so long I kept falling asleep it's like five hours long when you do it at one time but I kept falling asleep so it took me forever and you basically can't go on the floor until you finish that and also you have to do like these hooters like online things and I didn't have time for that at the time I was still in school so I was like I haven't finished my online stuff can I just like not go on the floor today on my first day I said that because I was so scared and he was like no you can still go on the floor and we'll work on your computer stuff later also whenever you're training you have to take a bar test so that was like something I wasn't even expecting and nobody talked about it in the video yeah so basically you have to take a test on like a seating chart and then you also have to take another test on like the bar so like your beers the liquor so that's like every type of whiskey they have vodka rum gin all that stuff and it's really not that hard not any harder than any test that you've taken in high school so so some things that i learned during training were that you have to use a beth nap so that's a napkin for every table that you serve you have to write your name on it with a little heart i would like write my name in cursive and then do some little hearts just so it looks like super cute and girly whenever I put it down on the table. But that's just so that if your customers forget your name, then they have your name there. Another thing is birthday songs. So you have to learn the birthday songs and they're pretty easy, but whenever, so I got hired at the Fable Hooters and then I later transferred to a Charlotte Hooters. And <laughs> when I tell you guys, I loved working at the Fable Hooters. Like I literally felt like I had a family there. I felt like all the girls were so literally like my type of people like it was such like bad bitch energy and so welcoming and then like whenever i got to charlotte it was just very like everybody's there just to make money we go home we don't really talk type of thing which is like literally fine because even if they did talk like i wouldn't really you know like i'm here while i'm here but whenever i go home i'm home that type of thing but literally nobody when i tell you guys nobody at the Charlotte Hooters knew the happy birthday song. I had to teach like four girls a happy birthday song like two minutes before we were supposed to sing it like three times and it was such a nightmare. 
every single time it was such a nightmare i also learned that at hooters there's this thing called jump start so basically before every single shift um you're supposed to be there ready in your uniform hair makeup uniform everything ready to go and basically whenever i got to charlotte that was not a thing either so there was pros and cons about both stores but I don't know like I just feel like jumpstart is a key thing because that's where we were told like if we were out of anything what games were on for that day what events were going on that type of thing and then that's where you also discuss like minis so basically whenever you're serving you have sections and based on whoever sells the most mini desserts gets the better section whenever I got to Charlotte that literally wasn't even a thing basically a jumpstart that's where they check your uniform at the end of the meeting they look you turn around in a little circle you show them your uniform and at the Fable Hooters they would always make sure that we had on a black bra if we were wearing a black shirt, nude bra if we were wearing a white shirt and at the Charlotte Hooters they didn't really care about any of that stuff as long as we were wearing a bra, had our name tag and everything like that. The managers would just say stuff to us like separately since they didn't really have a jump start at the Charlotte Hooters. So the next section that I'm going to go into is actually the uniform fully like breaking down the entire uniform for Hooters girls. And while I was working at Hooters, I could not have any of my tattoos showing. When I first started, I always covered up my tattoo with concealer, but after a while, I just stopped covering it up because I saw other girls weren't covering it up. And at the Fayetteville one, they were a little more strict about it. But now because of the new uniform, so they have like the crop tops and stuff, Hooters girls are kind of like allowed to have a more modern look now. So they don't really care about the tattoos anymore. But before, like whenever I first started at Hooters, girls were buying like Derma Blend foundation to put over their leg tattoos like seriously having to cover up every single tattoo but they don't have to do that anymore at hooters there is a white uniform and a black uniform the bartenders always wear the black uniform the regular hooters girls always wear a white uniform except for on fridays they get to wear the black uniform they used to have like a military uniform that was worn on tuesdays and fridays but whenever i was working at hooters as far as our hair we could wear our hair down it could be curly straight wavy literally didn't matter as long as your hair was in a cute style i normally always wear my hair and like my natural hair so it was like super wavy beach waves type thing they never really had a problem with hair until you looked raggedy like obviously every girl doesn't want to wear makeup every single day we get that but there's some girls that just will come in there with like no makeup eyelashes on with their hair in like a messy bun or something and sometimes they would tell them to change it unless they made it look cute Originally, Hooters girls were only allowed to wear their hair down, which I know had to like literally suck so bad. Even though I literally basically only wear my hair down. <laughs> it's something that I noticed at Hooters also is like if one girl does like a new hairstyle, every single girl is going to do that hairstyle after her. It's kind of funny. It's like how in high school, like how that would happen. But it's just crazy because like... I don't know it was hooters as far as makeup goes you basically only had to have like mascara a cheek color and a lip color but obviously i go all out and i do a full face every single time there was like two days that i went into hooters with like no makeup on and i popped on lashes but one of the days i was having like a really bad day so yeah but there was some girls who literally wore the bare minimum like mascara and some chapstick or something and sometimes that would work but on other days when managers would be feeling a little more like hooter like they'd be like okay you need to start wearing makeup and as you guys know as far as the uniform you always have to wear white socks and before starting like i didn't know how to properly do the uniform so it's your pantyhose your pantyhose goes over your foot your sock goes over the pantyhose and then your obviously your foot goes in the shoe. But some girls like I've seen them have their socks under their pantyhose, which I think is just like weird. But yeah, something that really sucks about the pantyhose is that you have to pay for every single new pair that you get. And at one point in time, every single TikTok video I was making was me going to work getting new pantyhose every single day because I would have to spend five dollars every single freaking day on new pantyhose. It was so annoying, but pantyhose make your legs look so good. So yeah, but Hooters changed their pantyhose like they used to have really good fabric and then all of a sudden they started getting really cheap pantyhose that literally tear right in between your legs where the most friction is and it's like like y'all know what you're doing a tip i have for putting on pantyhose is starting at your ankles and pulling them up with your fingers don't use your nails use your fingers and just pull them up because if you use your nails they're gonna pop as far as nails go for hooters it was such a battle at the Fable Hooters. Like they wanted us to have these short either French tip or pink nails and that just did not work for a lot of the girls. Like a lot of the girls would have like 
diamonds long nails and I was one of those girls and it was just a constant battle because like nobody wants those little nails, you know? I don't know if they've changed that anymore, but you're supposed to have like French tip or ombre, like pink plain nails. Or your nails have to, if they are a different color, they all have to be that one color. They can't be different colors, but they really enforce that in Fayetteville, not so much like the Charlotte Hooters that I was working at. And something that I just wanted to say about the girls that are nervous about like applying because of the uniform, because of anything, you don't have to have a butt to work at Hooters. You don't have to have boobs. You don't have to have a tiny waist. You don't have to have thick thighs. You don't have to have little thighs. Like you can be whatever to a certain extent, obviously. But like I have seen like so many different types of Hooters girls. Like you guys will literally just have to go and apply and find out if you get hired or not. Because I'm telling you guys, if you guys have the personality for it, you're gonna get hired. As I told you guys earlier, like there's a different type of Hooters girl for every girl. Not every Hooters girl is gonna look the same. Every Hooters girl is gonna even look remotely the same. The girls who think that you have to be like picture perfect to work at Hooters have never been in Hooters. Also, if you are not chosen to be a Hooters girl, you can be a host or you can be a to-go girl. And to-go girls still make tips and they still, they make like 10 to 12 dollars an hour or something like that, which I think is crazy because they literally just have to sit outside and take orders and give orders out and stuff like that. To work at Hooters, in order to serve, you need to be 18. If you want to bartend, you have to be 21. Also to serve at Hooters, you do not have to have any experience. Like I told you guys, I literally had no experience. There's so many girls that have no experience and I promise you, it's just a learning curve. You will get it once you start. It's not as hard as it seems. I had really bad stress and anxiety before I was a server and let me just tell you right now, serving only made it worse <laughs> because when you have eight tables at one time and they're all ready to check out and some of them need silverware and some of them need drinks, other people need sauces, you're still waiting for like an hour on somebody else's food, like it's gonna give you extra stress and anxiety and that's the one thing i don't really miss about serving like obviously i bartend now which is completely different and there's no food at the place that i work at so it's so much easier to just deal with people's drinks instead of the food aspect because baby let me tell you with so many days where i was stressed stress 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 but the next section of this video i'm going to be talking about money the money working at hooters so this is a very exciting part the money was one of my favorite parts about working at hooters i went from making 15 dollars an hour as a supervisor at walmart to literally making like seven to eight hundred dollars a week just from serving and i literally was so scared to start serving because nobody in my family had ever served before and i was like is this a good like money industry like i didn't really know any girls who had served but i knew like the girls that from my high school that i had seen that have like served for a long time say that they make good money but it's just like could i make that good money you know but i'm just gonna tell you guys like basically how i broke it down as far as like my worst days to my best days the worst night or day at hooters would be like 25 to 50 dollars and that's like worst case scenario okay 25 to 50 dollars normally on those nights i was either cut or sent home because we were very slow and it was during a very slow season those days are super rare but they do happen an okay day would be like $95 to $125 because it's like okay yeah I made this amount of money but I know I can make more but they weren't super bad days it's like okay at least I made money but then they were better days on a great day at Hooters I would make anywhere from like $150 to it ranges honestly like 150 to 400 dollars i want to say really really good days are like 500 dollars the most i've ever made at hooters was 900 dollars one day i worked a double i was a bartender in the morning and then i served at night personally i claimed most of my money like whenever i had to check out so the good thing about serving is that every single day you get to take cash home in the thing about that is there's a certain part of your money that's calculated on like in the system and there's like a certain part that isn't because you have credit card tips and you have cash tips so basically your cash tips you legally you're supposed to claim all your cash tips and for some people they don't claim all the cash tips just because they only want it to look like they make a certain amount of money but for me i wanted my money to be on record for like just records and stuff so i claimed most of my money also, I wanted to say that the Fable Hooters that I worked at, it was very busy all the time, but people did not have as much money as people in Charlotte did. So while Fable was super busy, I had to work my butt off to get the money that I made there. But Charlotte Hooters, 
I was only a bartender and people have hella money in Charlotte. So and you never know like what walks of life are gonna come to you, especially in Charlotte. So I made a really good amount of money in Charlotte. Also, I just wanna say that bartending literally doubled, tripled, I don't care, my money, like literally bartending. Once I became a bartender, my money just began to stack, baby. Like while I was serving, I wasn't really able to stack my money. But once I was a bartender, it was so much money that I was able to actually save it, you know? <sighs> the next section of this video is gonna be talking about the men at Hooters. I actually got fired from Hooters because I was talking about one of the customers because he was being very rude to me. And I already told you guys, I have a, there's a whole video on it um, about why I got fired and I basically called him the name in a video. And I made a vi the video because I was actually sticking up for myself, but then I called him the name and that's what got me fired, which is obviously my fault. But I just think it's a little crazy that like, that rude customer is still able to just like walk all over Hooters girls, you know, because like he has a reputation. But anyways, so one thing that you need to know before working at Hooters is that there are so many different types of men and you will see the way men move. You will see the different types of men. You'll see literally you'll be put in every single scenario that you probably haven't imagined or have imagined before. So I've had married men ask me for my number. I've literally been through so much while working at Hooters. Like I've had men take pictures of me and me literally see them holding their phone up. Imagine this is a phone, right? So I'm on my phone, whatever. Imagine me ordering my food, my phone like this saying, I want to get a six piece wing. Like the camera's right here and you're serving me in the, it's, they will do anything yeah. girl they will do anything and yeah. basically in the cases of where i've had men i've caught men taking pictures of me i'm not gonna say which hooters did what but yeah. let me just say that both of the different managers that i had did completely different things to the people who took pictures of me so at one of the hooters i somebody took a picture of me and i told the manager and let's just say i was ignored and then at the other hooters that i worked at Somebody took a picture of me and the manager literally went up to him and was like, you're gonna have to leave that of your phone, whatever. I was so happy when that happened because when someone takes a picture of you and you don't even know them and they're like the age of your grandpa, it is so uncomfortable. And I ended up getting used to it, which is really sad to say, but when you're working at a place like that, obviously people are gonna try to take pictures of you without your permission. And you just have to put them in their place basically because I've had men try to play stupid like they didn't take a picture of me. The reason why I wanted to address the creepy men part is because I saw a video where this girl literally said she never was put into any situations where she had to deal with anyone creepy or whatever. Me personally, that was not the case, okay? I literally dealt with creepy men every single day. It was just seriously a whirlwind of me learning about how men really are in the real, real world, you know? Because mainly the people who go into Hooters are men. There was also regulars who are guys that always come in there and those types of customers truly end up being like your security guards, your brothers, whatever you want to call them. They get, you get so close to them and they truly are just there for the girls. They're just regulars, so they're always there. So they obviously have a really good relationship with basically every single Hooters girl that's in there and they want the best for every single Hooters girl. There are some regulars who have their favorites, but there are some regulars who just have good hearts. <laughs> Another type of man that could be in Hooters is a sugar daddy. So basically, you will not see it coming. You will not even really be able to tell that they're a sugar daddy from the start. They're just gonna they're gonna treat you like a normal server, whatever. They'll get a good tip. Then you might see them the next time. They might ask you for your number, and then they'll probably try to text you to see when you work. And then next thing you know, they'll be buying you clothes for you to go pick up at the mall. That's really just how it works. There are some sugar daddies that expect way more for what they're giving you. And I personally, I personally never met with a sugar daddy or regular outside of work. I literally will only talk to them inside of work and on my phone outside of work type of thing. But I have had sugar daddies, I guess, buy me things in the mall for me to go pick up. Um, taking, well, actually, that's a lie. And sometimes having a sugar daddy might mean just trying to get 
that money, honey, okay? That's all I'm gonna say about that. If you guys want a video on that type of thing, tips, all that type of stuff, just let me know. I don't really know how to go about that, but yeah, just let me know down below. But they're in there. There's men with lots of money in those types of places, so they are definitely there. And I have not seen that in any of the videos, and I don't know why. So the women at Hooters, obviously, you know that if you are serving a couple, it's a girl and her boyfriend, don't try to be all flirted to the boyfriend. I normally just focus on the girl whenever I'm serving a couple. I try to compliment her on something she's wearing or if her nails look nice or if I like her hair or I just genuinely try to only give most of my service to her and then because sometimes their girlfriends will like to speak for the guy and that type of thing. But I had some bad experiences like as far as like girls just obviously being really uncomfortable like they don't even want to look my way. But there are other girls who will literally like be discussing with their boyfriend about what their server looks like and stuff because they genuinely are just like open to that type of thing or whatever. But I don't know women aren't that bad at Hooters. The only actually no groups of women that come into Hooters. I need to say that groups of women that come into Hooters with only like one guy or it's just like a whole like group of women like really catty women that's the worst worst type of table to get one time you guys i had a whole group of women right whole table like 10 women when i tell you guys that by the time that table left i was ready to shave my head dye my hair literally cut my eyebrows like i was so just irritated mad angry sad that i had been treated the way i was because some women go in there and they just feel like they can treat you like literal trash because you're a hooters girl and let me tell you if any customer ever had me feel some type of way i always made sure they knew i i made sure they knew that's exactly why i got fired because i made sure they knew but i don't know you really have to learn to stick your ground whenever you're serving because people will try to run all over you. So as far as the women like that you work with type thing, I had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful bond with most of the girls that I worked with at Fayetteville Hooters. I also met a couple of really good friends at the Charlotte Hooters that I worked at, but there are some girls y'all that will literally listen to what you're saying so that they can go tell the girls just like in high school. There are some girls that are just overall very sneaky people and there's nothing you can do about that, but just, just make sure you're minding your business. You're there for the right reasons and all that drama and stuff, just leave it at home. Like I am not one for that. Like I hate, like, I don't know. I like like reality TV, but I, I don't want to like actively always be in some shit going on. You know what I mean? I personally was never in anything, like in any drama or anything at either Hooters that I was at, but there was sometimes some drama around me. I just made sure not to get in it because that's not what I was there for. But obviously like with all girls working there's gonna be girls who take your table there's gonna be girls who go talk to your regular who try to steal your money there's gonna be girls trying to find out how much you made that day there's some girls that are just very sneaky but some of the things that I have learned while working at Hooters are that you should always have some type of weapon on you not a weapon but like some type of protection on you. I always carried pepper spray I know some girls who carried other stuff to protect themselves because sometimes Hooters are and very unsafe places and stuff and you need that type of protection. I always make sure to have pepper spray. At every single Hooters, the manager is supposed to walk you out, but sometimes they don't, so you just have to ask them. I always make sure to ask to be walked out because I don't like walking out to my car alone anyways. Another thing I had to watch out for was giving my number out like sometimes i would be so under pressure i would give my number out and it got to the point where i was giving my number out so much that i was just blocking everyone i would give my number out and block 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 because i was so scared to be like no because listen because one time i gave this was the first time i ever got gave out a fake number because i was so fucking tired of giving out my number i was so tired of giving it out like i didn't want to give it out but there's some people like you say no so many times and they still are just like i don't have instagram i don't have what and it's like okay like okay okay i have other shit i have to go do and like they are just so naggy but the reason why i started to become so stressed was because one time i gave out a fake number because i was so tired of giving out my real number like i just said that i gave my fake number the customer came back saying that he lost his phone so he was asking one of the girls where his phone was he went to the bathroom to go look like he was looking for his phone and then when i was right the bathroom is right here i was coming out of the the wait station where i make the drinks and stuff and the bathroom is right here so he's right here and it was the customer that i gave the fake number to he came up to me he said did you give me a fake number i was like is this real life right now 
Like, I have never given out a fake number. This man literally came back, drove all the way back. This was like 20, 30 minutes later, y'all. Drove all the way back just to confront me about me giving him a fake number. I was literally like, oh my gosh. What do I tell this man? I was like, oh my gosh, I did not mean to give you a fake number or whatever. And then I gave him my real number, which is so funny because he ended up being one of my favorite regulars because he always just gave me so much money. Yeah, so... I don't know that was really traumatic for me and i was like oh i'm never giving away a fake number again because i don't want to get killed you know what i mean and like those men are crazy so yeah just be careful if you're giving out a fake number because sometimes they might come back and ask you why and you might just freak the fuck out and be like i don't know and give them your real number which was the whole point of not doing another thing that i learned at hooters is to always id an alcohol service you don't know who you're serving. You could be serving a pregnant woman who is about to pop the next day. Like you can tell and she orders a drink and you better still ID her because, and you can't press a pregnant woman about drinking because that's not your place. Obviously we all know you shouldn't do that, but that's not your place. Anyone could work for the alcohol like law. So make sure that you are IDing everyone whenever you get hired. The next thing is always make sure if you are meeting up with a regular outside of work, have a friend with you. Have someone spying on you if you wanna go by yourself, if you're that risky, or have someone with you, or have someone, give someone your location because you don't know what these people, these people's true intentions are. Obviously, there is some regulars you're gonna meet that will literally become some of your best friends for the rest of your life, but there are some other people who you might think are out for your own good, but they're not. So you just have to be really careful because I've read plenty of horror stories of girls going out with their regulars and getting killed, so yeah. Another thing I learned is that you should literally just buy your pantyhose in bulk. Buy them off of the dancing tights websites because literally you're going to be spending so much money on tights anyways. You might as well go ahead and get them in bulk and then you'll always be prepared and you won't ever have to worry about getting to work like 10 minutes early to buy the tights and put them on and all that good stuff. Another thing about Hooters is you never know who is who. So you can literally be serving a multi-millionaire and you will not know it until you get that $200 check on your tab so just make sure that you always serve every single person with as much compassion love and kindness as you can because i know i sure did because i learned very quickly that you cannot judge a book by its cover and literally anyone could be there to give you a thousand dollar tip ten hundred dollar tip like anything another tip is writing thank you with a heart on every single fucking receipt you get every single receipt make it a habit some people will look at that and literally just be like oh my gosh that was the best thing i've ever had all day it will literally just make their day my experience as a loser girl was literally so fun i got to be around so many girls that literally had the same energy as i did like funny pretty not and like literally a no judge zone and there were just some other girls that I met that I literally, they literally came from completely different walks of life and I never would have met them if it wasn't for Hooters. I understand there's girls out there that are like, oh my gosh, I only like being around guys. But when you get a whole bunch of girls around each other, you will just feel the women empowerment around you. You know what I mean? Like, it's just such a good feeling to be around all girls sometimes. I am so glad that I even was able to have the opportunity to be a Hooters girl. I seriously am so thankful for everyone that I met along my journey. And it seriously just helped me turn into the person that I am now because I was able to learn so much stuff throughout working with the public and you know a different side of life that i had never seen before working at like walmart or zaxby's like it's just there's so many things to learn in a place like that and yeah i'm really grateful for my experience at hooters and literally if i wasn't really doing social media i would probably still be working at hooters because i would just go apply to another one or i'd probably like go to work at Swim Peaks or something but I definitely recommend working at Hooters for anyone who is you know who loves makeup who loves to do their hair who loves to just be pretty and be around people and make friends and make money you should definitely go work at Hooters because it was definitely one of the most fun experiences I've ever had I also want to say that I did apply for the Hooters calendar whenever I was working at Hooters I took pictures for the Hooters calendar but unfortunately I did not make it um they have really strict like guidelines and stuff and i just feel like maybe it's like my stomach and stuff the reason why i didn't make it i don't really know i can't show the pictures on here for you guys because it might get taken down but if you guys go to my instagram i have my bikini pictures 
up of where I took pictures for Hooters and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my uniform, like my top, just so you guys can see what I look like in my Hooters uniform for any of you who forgot, even though it hasn't been that long. So give me just one second and I'm gonna go put on my shirt and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did not put the pants on obviously, but this is the like Sunday football jersey shirt. I actually loved this shirt and seeing my, Seeing my chest looks like this literally makes me miss working at Hooters because I just miss being a cutesy, cutesy little Barbie doll all the time. You know what I mean? I don't know. Working at Hooters literally makes you feel so good about yourself because you feel so confident all the time, but it is just such a confidence booster. And I seriously am so glad that I was able to experience this because I was so jealous of all the girls growing up who were able to work at Hooters. And I'm just glad to have been a ex Hooters girl. I feel like one day I'll end up working there again. I don't know. <laughs> Literally, if you guys have never had to put on a shirt like this, you don't understand what tight is. Look at my armpit. Like literally, it is so hard. Like there's no room in between this shirt and my armpit right now. This shirt is so cute. I honestly recommend any serving job for any girl who hasn't ever served before, but especially Hooters. But that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you guys want to see any other Hooters types of videos, just let me know because it literally does not bother me talking about Hooters at all. Yes, I was fired, but I literally still love Hooters as a company. And if you guys still have some questions, just go ahead and comment them down below and I will be sure to answer them in the comment section. But that is going to be it for this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and most importantly, subscribe. Because I know this might be your first time seeing me, but you know you want more? You know you want to come back for more so just go ahead and subscribe it's an easy little click of the button thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end of this video i will see you guys next time bye